Welcome to this special edition of the AppDev Summit series, where we are diving deep into trends, tools, technologies that are shaping the modern application development landscape. During today's The Cube Dev App Dev Summit, we are seeing a powerful convergence of, of platform simplicity, developer productivity, AI acceleration, and DevSecOps first thinking. I'm really excited to have Tintree and Phil on at this session today. It's really awesome to have you here. Welcome, Phil. Uh, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me back, Paul. I'm happy to be here in a minute. I'm Phil Trikovic. I am the SVP and GM of Tintree. Uh, Tintree is the world's first AI uh, developed appliance. We've been on the market uh, commercially since 2012. Most people know 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 of us for our uh, special handling of hypervisors, which we have now extended over the last three or four years into the container space. Yeah, it's, and that's why I'm so excited for you to be part of the App Dev Summit because where Tintree brings that modern infrastructure, de delivering that intelligence, VMware uh, a kind of storage purpose-built appliance or application-centric violence, it really is uh, an important part of the growing and accelerated adoption of the Kubernetes ecosystem. Tintree's automated you know, data-driven platform, it plays big into the day zero to day two plus the scalability uh, and operations, as well as enabling DevSecOps to optimize performance and security across the entire application lifecycle. So awesome to have you on the show today. Really great to have you here. I think Tintry brings a lot to the App Dev Summit. Um, so let's jump right in. I mean, there's a lot talking about uh, the, the 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 infrastructure challenges, right? These are pressures that are accelerating software development. Uh, yeah, as you know, my focus is around App Dev. Um, I deal with past, present, and future of bridging the old and new together. Uh, the research that we just saw, we fielded was really driving a lot of the the you know uh, awareness of challenges that are in the market today. We were seeing tools and talent gaps across hybrid and AI na uh, native environments is a is a big area, and there's also fragmentation and observability and storage infrastructure. So, so Phil, I'd love to get your perspective from Tintree. Uh, you know, and how do you can simplify smart infrastructure and help these these challenges that organizations are seeing? Okay, no, that's a great point, Paul, and that is probably number one obstacle uh, besides understanding talent pool, et cetera. But understanding that that hypervisors aren't going anywhere, right? I think we talked about that last time. That's going to be with us for the foreseeable future, probably the rest of my lifetime, anyway. Um, but now you have this new methodology of delivering applications coming up, right? So what was Tintree in a weird way? We were very lucky because we were designed for object awareness at the lowest level. That is extended into what you're doing with containers. That's required to do any of this at scale um, and at an expense that's tolerable and actually profitable for businesses to, to deploy, right? So we removed those obstacles day one out of the uh, it's aware of what you are doing. It's aware of the objects that you're placing them, et cetera. And it can become a very, very integral part of your CI CD workflow. Yeah, absolutely. And and when we look at the CI CD workflow, the research is telling it, right? We see, we see that application cadence is important. Infrastructure is uh, needs to be frictionless, right? It needs to be a smooth for the platform engineering teams and the app dev teams to do their jobs. We're seeing the faster uh, releasing of code KPIs from businesses are accelerating. And in fact, we're seeing that 24% uh, of organizations want to release code on an hourly basis, yet only 8% are able to do so. And a lot of the challenges they're running into is a complex infrastructure. So this is where a legacy infrastructures really can't meet that modern uh, development needs, right? We they they just they're they're siloed, they're monolithic. Um, they only work for those uh, those siloed applications. And you know when we look at this, uh, the you know the days, Phil. I think when I think back of, of of the days of like submitting a help desk ticket and waiting three days for somebody to pick it up and responding to it, and then waiting another three days for something to happen. Those days are long gone, right? The, the, that that's uh, that's not a thing anymore. Uh, we rec recognize that in the uh, in the research, we see that there's a need for platform aware storage and application alliance for systems. So, Phil, I really want to kind of get into uh, the conversation around not just faster deployment of applications, but as infrastructure's expectations are evolving, AI is a big part of this, and and hybrid environments are going mainstream. What are your thoughts around around storage as code? Uh, and managing Kubernetes environments and hyper hypervisor environments. What are your thoughts around this? 
I, that, that's happening everywhere, and it's it's interesting. And let me I'm going to digress and bring in a company that we partner with because I can probably explain this better without graphics uh, referencing an actual new application. Um, so there's a company called Pigstores we spoke about them before bre recently. They're a partner of ours for delivering uh, camera vision and a bunch of other sensor based uh, applications, primarily for industrial monitoring of you know oil spills, personal protective gear, what have you. Uh, people wearing the right things. If they had tried to develop this entire application stack on a, a hypervisor-based infrastructure or on a whatever legacy-type system, it never, they wouldn't be a company with. Right? So the speed that they gain with training, if you look at the flow of how they actually train models, where they'll say, uh, let me make one up an oil rig. They're monitoring for oil in the air, oil in the water, and monitoring uh, you know, the environment for protective gear or whatever's supposed to happen. That has to be trained constantly. Every day, the things change. Talked in the last session a little bit about superposition. I'm, I'm using the wrong word, but I don't know how else to represent a steady state of the way things are supposed to be in nature. The way they've done this with this new new architecture, with Tentry, with these applications, is the only I.O. that happens is when something changes, right? You're not going to do that if you put a bunch of servers, laptops, video cameras on site and have to monitor it. It's not deliverable that way. Or it is, it's going to cost you 100 times what they're experience costs. So the outcome, the application outcome and it delivering actual results to businesses has to be done in a new way that is aware of the objects and every change that happens in the application stack. Otherwise you can do it on legacy things. You can, it's going to cost you where it's a thousand bucks with them. It's going to be a million there. Yeah. It's, it's not just also, it's not just about financial impact. It's about other things like security and optimization and all the efficiencies that you gain by moving towards a, a modern tech stack. But let's put this into a real world impact, right? Because when we think about, you know, you and I can sit here and talk tech all day long, right? And we can talk about, uh, you know, the, the, the impacts of the market and such, but customer successes are really where the, that's where the proof's in the pudding, right? And when we look at Customers leveraging, you know, Tintry to improve these workflows, performance, and scale operations. You know, there's support of, uh, you know, uh, AI IDE vendors, right? There's automation and, and delta tracking for data sets and integrated workflows. And you know, and during our briefing, we talked about how Tintry, and I love this, how the comments that were made as a force multiplier for lean infrastructure teams. Love that kind of statement. Can you expand a little bit more on some of these like real world use cases? And the customer success is that that people are taking what we're talking about and, and implementing it to to design. Oh, absolutely. Uh, unfortunately, I can't use their name. Uh, but if anybody wants a reference or a talk point, uh, reach out to Paul and he'll get you in touch with me. Uh, but the world's largest uh, AI vendor uh, right now, uh, I believe it's one of the largest companies in the world. Their IDE environment is produced on tension. So everything is produced for those types of environments requires very, very in-depth object tracking, change tracking, security, you know, who's touching what, where's it going? And it's thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and millions of objects cannot be managed in a, in a legacy manner or by an individual person to that large. Um, so we're obviously having tremendous success delivering that environment to that manufacturer. Um, so we're very deep uh, legacy, very deep in that space on knowledge based on how to do these properly best practices to avoid pitfalls. Um, but it, and if done properly, it's going to realize tremendous value to the end user for the, across the entire stack. Yeah, absolutely. And, and that's uh, an example of taking the tech and applying it to business, business value, because it's not like we can sit here and talk about all the coolness and, and all the greatness, you know, throughout our careers, we both have developed a lot of cool tech. We've seen a lot of cool tech kind of come and go. Um, you know, and, and some of it was really good, but it just didn't really apply to market. This is where it applies to market, right? We see in the research that friction, complexity, and skill gap issues are challenges. Uh, you know, Tintree's approach may simplifies that. Uh, and, but like, I do want to talk about this because Tintree's approach is different than the market, right? There, there's a crowded infrastructure market out there, okay? And when we look at the crowded infrastructure market, whether whether we're talking about adaptive in infrastructures that, uh, you know, that learn from app behavior um, or, you know, in simplifying force uh, for, for complex, uh, you know, in distributed environments. But I also want to almost touch on the one piece here, um, the VMware piece. It's, it's kind of changing and things are shifting. 
Uh, VMware was leading edge at one point in time, but it seems to kind of be changing up in the market. Can you touch a little bit about, you know, uh, that um, from the perspective of, you know, the App Dev Summit and why that's important to day zero, day one, day two in DevSecOps, but also what are you doing in that space? So, the, you know, the VMware Broadcom uh, acquisition is probably an entirely different uh, subject, but uh, we obviously support VMware. I think still more than half of our customers are are very uh, heavy VMware users. That's down from 70% two years ago. Uh, where it's important with the Tintry story and to our customers is to us, we don't care. We're hypervisor agnostic. We can support both hypervisors and containers, whether it's Kubernetes, Docker, whichever methodology you're using. It fully be supported on one frame as if they were the same. So administrators, um, you asked me what was one of the, it was a, you said something about talent gap and then skills gap. It's funny, but it, to me, it's the more I see and I travel the globe, I told you I've been around the world twice with some of globe's biggest. Uh, they have the skills, they have the people, they're doing the wrong things because they're focused on managing raid sets and NIC cards and FA adapters. That does not need to be done with us anymore. Like that's what needs to happen across the board. It's like we've got very talented, high paid people that are focused on stuff that they were doing in the 90s. You know, it's we haven't leveled up the platforms fully yet. And that's what Tintry has done. Um, but we need to see that drag in other areas as well. So that's our main story. They're ones and zeros to us. We're most efficient at producing and delivering. I don't care if it's hypervisors, containers, or whatever the format is. Yeah, that that makes sense. Actually, I walk the industry shows and you know talk to different folks and such. And you know, I will give you, I will make a, a bet with you that we go to our next show together, and I will give you a shiny quarter if you can find me somebody that calls himself the storage admin because they're not storage admins anymore. They're platform engineering or they're something else. But like that's because that's what that's shifting in the market, right? And 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 frankly, it goes back to what we're talking about those complexity issues. Then uh, organizations are pushing back on vendors to reduce the complexity. But Phil, I want to kind of look forward here, right? When we're looking ahead and we're looking at you know AI and acquisitions and t and industry trends and what's happening in the space, where is Tintree heading and how are you preparing for the next AI infrastructure? Right. It, there was a couple of areas we were we we talked about on briefings. We talked about is is prep for this, which was like the you know platform nine integration, for example, or the um, sovereign and hybrid hybrid uh, readiness, right? For as an example, I know that's important. That's one of the reasons you're going around the world, right? Talking to different people, uh, but also market position around agentic AI and simplicity and performance. These are areas that were really interesting during the briefing, and I think that they align nicely to the AppDev Summit. Yeah, so Platform 9, um, it, here's an exclusive because it hasn't been announced yet, but we just finished signing a deal with them uh, to be OEM provider uh, for Plat9 as well as to support their existing customers. They have a hell of a solution that can migrate uh, uh, VMware in parallel on Tintree um, in real time. So customers that are struggling with that, you're starting to see these come out of Plat9 is leading the, the, the charge and actually the tech behind being able to migrate simply off of VMware if that's what, you, what the customer wants to do. So we're super excited about that. They also have extended their hypervisor functionalities into integration with containerized worlds. So it's something whoever's listening worth looking at if you're looking at doing both or a combination of the two. So lots of interesting things developing, but again, back to kind of your point, the talent pool, and this isn't just tech guys, this goes up to business VPs, president CEOs, it's an noisy world. Uh, and they're very much struggling how to make decisions. And there's a lot of analysis paralysis because you really can go very wrong and spend a lot of money without a result. Um, if you don't, if you try to do things the way we've always done them, that's kind of the number one to me is the mindset of our community is the way we've done them, the way we've done them. Well, you're going to lose to people who are starting fresh and they're doing it far more efficient. Yeah, I, I absolutely. And efficiency is the is the key. It's almost becoming the new currency of business, right? When you're trying to reach your KPIs. Congratulations on the platform nine integration. That's really exciting news. I, I am I'm thoroughly impressed with their solutions. I I I I'm, it absolutely the audience here should should take a look at what they're doing there. They have a very impressive way of migration, live migration of, of VMs. Um so Phil, final takeaways. We're coming to the end of our session here. Uh, you know, we we were looking at the data that's coming out of the app dev summit, which we're going to do a full readout for, and anybody that's watching can actually, you know, set up some time with us to kind of go through this. We'll have the assets available, and you'll be promoting those. 
Uh, but when we look at the importance of performance aware application aligned infrastructure, that's really becoming more and more important, but it also is becoming um, uh, well, the frictionless and like invisibility of the infrastructure, so to speak. Uh, but it also, what's Tintree's role in solving some of these complexities with the smart and scalable simplicity, right? You know, we we talked about it. I know we. I, I want to kind of reiterate that point because I think it's incredibly important when we start talking about this. We see in the research that organizations are hiring uh, generalists over specialists. We see 67% of respondents are indicating this. So that's a big area of focus around simplicity. We also see that there's, uh, you know, uh, obviously opportunity here for the audience watching to have a deeper conversation post this event and post the conversation here. So what would you what would you advise the audience here or what their takes with some takeaways? Be open to new, um, investigate thoroughly, test, uh, be open to change. Uh, if, if we all, and there's always resistance and there has to be, right. You don't, you don't change every day or we're, we're all going nowhere. However, uh, I think a disservice is being done to the market, uh, by not thoroughly investigating claims, how one gets from point A to point B. So where Tentry, like in this big mix of cloud native, private cloud, public cloud, I don't care. Where do you need it to be and when it's that simple. And that's where it should be across the board at this point and of our evolution with all this AI intelligence why are we still fighting with with you know backups and this that and the other thing but that's still what i'm seeing 80 percent of the problems in the market it's still the same crap we were doing with 10 years ago now we actually have the tools where you're 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 two hundred thousand dollar brilliant tech guy who's been screwing around with backup schedules and restoring catalogs can actually produce some value for the company you know like let's really move to that and that's kind of my ask to everybody whether it's century or not let's let's move forward and stop trying to do things the old way. It's not going it, to, no one's going to see better. Sure. Yeah, I could have said that better myself. I think the thing that uh, I was talking earlier on another session uh, that, that I encourage the audience to watch in one of the sessions, but we were talking about uh, the change in the evolution of resources in the industry. It may be new to some of the people coming into their roles, but this is some of the stuff that's been really, it's kind of, you know, dated ways of doing things. It's time to think new. It's time to think about that new option. And one thing is absolutely certain is change is coming. Uh, was it AI and change is absolutely coming? Yeah. And, you know, colleagues, associates, customers, take the fear out of it. I, I wrote a, a brief like opinion piece on LinkedIn about this. The level of fear around the future and, and job security and these types of is absolutely unwarranted. Like this stuff is going to create more jobs. Pay attention to what it's producing. Um, and you'll be fine if you're, if you're going to lob on to, I have to do my IBM backups every night at five and that's my job. You know, anything that's automatable, you may want to be a little worried, but the good news is there's two more positions that are needed for that, that you probably could fill with your level of experience. So that I'm seeing that across the board. Yeah. I can agree more, Phil. Observation. There's plenty of opportunity out there. Make it. Talk about it. Don't fight it so much. Yeah, I, absolutely, Phil. It's you're, you're spot on. Great, great insights. And, and thank you, Phil, for attending this session today. This this is a really powerful session. It's always the, the beginning of the conversation. We absolutely want to continue the conversation with the audience here. I want to thank you for joining. I want to thank the audience who tuned in. We really appreciate you being part of the App Dev Dumb Right Summit. Well, that wraps up this session today, but tune in for the rest of the series with conversations diving deep into tools, trends, and talent shaping the future of application development. Whether you're deploying at the edge, building with AI, or modernizing your cloud stack, we've got you covered. Be sure to follow us on social. If you have any thoughts, questions, or just want to connect, you can always reach me at paulin at siliconangle.com. Until next time, stay curious and stay building.